Hello, you are welcome to the lesson for today. We started with the newborn, and then we've assessed the newborn. We've seen some injuries in the newborn. We are also going to look at also some malfunctioning in the newborn, which is jaundice in the newborn. Jaundice normally occurs in newborn. And it's a, a, it's a normal physiology. But we are going to look into the normal physiology and then the abnormal physiology of the newborn. So today, we are going to look at jaundice in the newborn. Let's look at neonatal jaundice. When we talk of neonatal jaundice, we are looking at jaundice that occurs within the first day of life to 28 days. Neonatal jaundice occurs as a result of what? Excessive breakdown of red blood cells after the birth or is due to what? Pathological reason. When we talk of pathological, we are looking at disease of the baby or that of the mother that affects the newborn. Jaundice is a yellowish discoloration of the skin, sclera, and the mucous memory due to what? An increase in the serum bilirubin level. When these babies or fetus are in utero, they have high red blood cells because of the activity. They are not doing anything on their own. Is the mother or the placenta that supplies them with their nutrients, their oxygen, exchange of gases, whatever activities that they are going to do, the life processes, everything is being done through the blood and then the placenta. So in utero, these babies need more red blood cells to carry out these life processes. So after birth, the babies don't need this high red blood cells again because they have to take oxygen on their own. They have to feed on their own. It's no more the placenta between the mother and then the fetus that carry out this activity. So they don't need these high red blood cells again. So what do they have to do? These red blood cells have to break down. And then in the process of breaking down, they release this bilirubin which brings about the yellowish discoloration of the skin. This condition becomes clinically apparent when the level of serum bilirubin reaches a level of about 80 to 120 micromole. What you have to note here is that adaptation from intrauterine life to extrauterine life in you two, the hemoglobin level is between 18 to 22 milligram per deciliter. Let's look at blue bean metabolism. How does the blue bean break down in the system to bring about this yellow discoloration of the skin? So this yellowish discoloration of the skin is due to what? Breakdown products of hemoglobin in the form of what? Immolized red blood cells. The lifespan of the red blood cell in the newborn tree is between 60 to 80 days. So when the baby is within this range, then the red blood cells keep on breaking down. And then they are releasing this bilirubin, which brings about the yellow discoloration of the skin. So as the red blood cells reaches this 60 to 80 days, they find it difficult to exist and then keep on circulating in the system. They are then destroyed in the system through what? Phagocytosis. And we blame phagocytosis in our anatomy and then physiology, where they break down these red blood cells and then they tend to release the blue ribbon. The free hemoglobin is then catabolized 
to bilirubin or is then breaking down to bilirubin, iron, and then protein. The iron and then the protein are used again for new red blood cells to be formed. But the bilirubin must be eliminated from the circulating system since it is what? Potential toxic substance for the body. It also has affinity for fatty and nervous tissue and if free in the system may bring about kernitarus. So quickly we need to what? Get rid of the blue beam from the baby's system. Because when you don't remove them from the system, they just attach themselves to the fatty tissues and then the nervous tissues. And you know that the baby needs these tissues for what? Survivor. It then combines with the albumin in the red blood cells and then send it to the liver to be changed into solute form that can be what? Excreted. So bear in mind, we have two forms of this bilirubin. We have the conjugated and then the unconjugated. The conjugated one is the soluble form that can be excreted, and then the unconjugated is the insoluble. And then they keep on flowing in the system that changes the color of the skin. The liver. In the liver, the bilirubin is first moved from the albumin. So we know that it combines with the albumin and then they are being sent to the liver. So when they get to the liver, the bilirubin is being released from the albumin or it is being detached from the albumin and then it flows on its own in the liver. So we also have an acid in the liver that attaches itself to the bilirubin so that it can go through the conjugation stage and then it can be excreted from the system. There is also an enzyme which is responsible for the what, transformation of this bilirubin. We've been told that we have acid in the liver that combines with what, the bilirubin. In the presence of an enzyme called the what, gluconel transferase. So these enzymes combines with what? The blue ribbon that had been attached to the acid and then they form the conjugated blue ribbon, which is in a what? A soluble or solute form. And then it can be excreted by the liver. So the end product, which is the conjugate blue ribbon, which is in a water solute form, is excreted from the liver via the what? The hepatic system into the intestine. In the intestine, the conjugated bilirubin is acted upon by the normal flora of the GIT to form the urobilirubin. Most of this is converted to what? The stethoscorum bilirubinogen, which gives the normal color to physics. So the normal physics color that we see has been what? Deodorized by this bilirubin. The rest of the urobilirubin is absorbed from the intestine and then excreted through the GIT as a bilirubinogen in the urine, giving it normal color. So all the color and then in the stool and then in the urine is as a result of what? This blue ribbon or conjugated blue ribbon. In case the passage of the conjugated blue ribbon through the GIT is impeded and we have a whole lot of activities that can go on in the GIT that will impede this conjugated blue ribbon. Some of them will be made unconjugated again. And then when they are make, being made this unconjugated, which is the insoluble form that cannot be excreted, they keep on flowing in the GIT or the body system to bring about the changes in the skin color. 
it will then enter the portal circulation again to be conjugated in the liver. So it's like a cycle. It goes and then it comes. It goes and then it comes. So the total serum bilirubin is the sum of what? Conjugated and then unconjugated bilirubin. When the unconjugated bilirubin is high, it damages the basal ganglia in the central nervous system, resulting in kinetoros. We've been told that this bilirubin, they have affinity for fatty and the nervous tissue. So when the bilirubin is high in the system, it combines or is able to pass through the blood brain barrier and then goes into the ganglia in the central nervous system, resulting in what we know as kinetoros. Kinetoros is a difficult condition to diagnose in the neonates, but the baby may show signs of hypothermia, poor cycling, and then abnormal motor reflexes because it has affected the brain tissue. So the baby will show all form of what? Mental retardation or neurological disorders. Later, the baby will develop signs of what? Cerebral irritation. So even if these babies are able to survive, we can have cerebral palsy, we can have mental retardation, neurological and learning difficulties. In a normal healthy baby or child, the level of bilirubin in the blood should not exceed 250 micromole per deciliter during the first week of life. So when the baby is being born, in a normal baby, the bilirubin level should not exceed 250 micromole. Let's look at the types of jaundice in the newborn. We have the physiological jaundice. We have the pathological jaundice and then hemolytic jaundice. We will take one, each and every one of them, and then we go into detail and then see how they occur. We will start with physiological jaundice also known as Iterus munatorium. This is due to immature or immaturity of the hepatic function in the newborn, combined with an increase or excessive breakdown of red blood cells. So with the baby having immature liver, and then the newborn to having high HB in utero, baby is now born, doesn't need this high red blood cells. So they keep on breaking down. And as they break down, they release this bilirubin. As this increase in bilirubin occurs, there's what? Excessive hemolysis of red blood cells and increases the bilirubin level. When this occurs, almost all newborn experience this elevated bilirubin. But only about half demonstrates observable signs of jaundice. So we are saying that for physiological jaundice, about 90% of all newborns go through this physiological jaundice but only few, about 10%, exhibit the signs and symptoms of physiological jaundice. It's normal with the baby. When we talk of physiology, we are looking at normal activities, normal function of the system. This is because in uterine life, the baby has what? High hemoglobin level about 18 to 22 deciliter. Therefore, after delivery, the child does not need this high hemoglobin level again. 
because it's no more the placenta and then the blood that is performing the life processes. But it's the baby himself or herself that is performing these life processes. Therefore, doesn't need this high HB. So what are the causes of physiological jaundice? The causes is due to what? Excessive breakdown of red blood cells. The baby in utero need high level of hemoglobin to attract more or enough oxygen to carry out its life processes. After the birth, this high hemoglobin is no more needed. Therefore, they need to be broken down. The lifespan of the red blood cells in a normal healthy baby is 60 to 80 days, and that of protein is 30 to 40 days. Therefore, when they reach these days, they quickly what and easily break down. These two factors preceded the need for the rapid breakdown of the hemoglobin level, resulting in high bilirubin. Liver immaturity. The liver inability to conjugate bilirubin is impaired because it may not be able to produce enough of the enzymes, that is the transferase, to cope with the large amounts of what? Bilirubin to be conjugated. Therefore, you see this bilirubin continue to flow in the body system of the baby. The another cause is low plasma or protein binding capacity. For the bilirubin to be converted in the GIT, so there is no protein in there. The protein is not concentrated enough as compared to an adult child. So these proteins are not able to combine with the bilirubin to be sent to the liver to be conjugated. So all these things combines. And you know we also need bacteria in the gene IT to also help in what? Excreting the bilirubin. But in the baby, all these processes are not there. Therefore, the bilirubin continue to flow in the system. And then they are being deposited on the fatty tissue and the nervous system, which results in the yellowish discoloration of the skin. So ideally, the conjugated bilirubin is reduced to urobin by the intestinal bacteria. But bear in mind, the child is not having this bacteria. And it's passed through urine and then the feces. Unfortunately, the blood of the newborn too is sterile and may retain or remain so for many days. The blood of the newborn contains an enzyme called what? The beta gluconase, which splits and is absorbed into the liver through the blood. So these factors brings about what? The jaundice in the newborn. How do we diagnose these babies? We can use the skin color to diagnose and should be more timely to assess it. It can be also seen through the sclera, the nails, and then the skin. It can also be seen better in daylight, as some people keep their babies indoors for seven days. We are saying that although you are keeping the baby indoors, you should bring the baby to a light where you can see the color of the baby. Estimation of serum bilirubin for conjugated and then unconjugated level can also be used to diagnose the jaundice. Then history taking to rule out pathological jaundice. You know, with the pathological jaundice, we see it there and then we can we will go into detail into pathological jaundice very soon. Science and symptoms. How would you know that the baby is having physiological jaundice and not pathological jaundice? First, we have the yellowish discoloration of the skin, the sclera, the urine. Then also, this jaundice appears within 72 hours. 
the first 72 hours of life, then you see the jaundice appearing. The maximum believing level does not reach 250 micromole per liter. The high serum believing level occurs on the third to fourth day, that is two to three days of baby's life. The jaundice disappear within seven to 10 days of life. So these are the cardinal signs that you see in physiological jaundice. Yellowish discoloration of the skin, sclera, and then the urine. The jaundice appear within the first 72 hours of life. The maximum believing level does not reach 250 millimole. And then the highest level of serum believing can occur or normally occurs after the third day of the baby's life. And within seven to 10 days, the jaundice disappears. These are the cardinal signs you see in physiological jaundice. Management. What management do we give to these babies? Mostly we say that these babies doesn't come out till the adoring day on the eighth day. But we are saying that even though the child may be indoors, you should place the child in a place where you can easily assess the skin color. With the management, we are saying that early breastfeeding should be encouraged. When you are able to breastfeed the baby, we increase the GIT mobility. We know that we said the GIT is sterile. So as the GIT is sterile, when the baby starts taking the breast milk, it increases, it increases the GIT bacteria. And when this occurs, it helps in the extraction of what? The conjugated bilirubin. It also helps the GIT to colonize the bacteria. And this affects the bilirubin level because they are able to what? Absorb and combine with the blue bean to be excreted. The liver will also supply the glucose to be manufactured by the liver enzymes. So in a way, we also have the enzymes in the liver that will help in what? Conjugating the blue bean. The degree of jaundice must also be observed if the serum level of is above normal, then the cause should be found out. So, when we find out that the serum bilirubin level is still high, we place the baby under the phototherapy. This is the application of what intense fluorescent light on the infant's exposed skin. So, we place the baby under this light with the skin exposed, with the section of the genital aspect, we cover that place, especially in the males, to protect the babies. So the process, after sexual changes in the blue beam, which is more soluble form, then the blue beam is being excreted. Let's look at the cautions when you place the baby under the phototherapy. What are some of the precautions that you need to embark on as a nurse during the care of this baby under the phototherapy? The infant needs special attention to avoid complications because when we place the baby under the light, we are exposing the baby to it and then the baby can lose its dehydration may set in, the skin color will change, there will be complications. So we need to observe all these changes in the newborn. So you need to pay special attention to the baby to avoid all these complications. The child eyes must be covered with an opaque mask to prevent exposure to the ultraviolet rays. 
you know, it slides. So this slides where it enters the baby's eye. You know, we also have yellow discoloration of the eye, though. But we need to cover the eye. If we don't cover the eye, the light may in turn what damage the cornea and then the baby may be blind. We also have to remove all dressing on the baby with the section of what? The genital. The shirt should be what? Properly sized to prevent occlusion of the nose. The nose. If you use it big, the baby nose will be covered and baby cannot breathe and the baby may die. The lid must be closed. The eyelid must be closed very well before the opaque mask is being applied to prevent scratching of the cornea. That may bring ulceration in the cornea. Then the eyelid should be, the cover on the eyelid should be removed periodically, especially about 15 minutes in every eight hours for inspection of any inflammation or excessive pressure on the eye. The child under the lights is turned frequently due to the fact that the area being protected from the light may retain their what? Jaundice. So we need to change the baby frequently so that all parts of the body may be exposed to the light to excrete the blue ribbon. Extra fluid must be given since the child may lose what? Fluid from insensible perspiration. You know, we are exposing the baby to light and then there will be more what? Sweating in the baby. And as the baby sweats a lot, it will what? Evaporate from the baby. So we need to provide more fluid to the baby to prevent dehydration and then dryness in the eye. The of the baby must be checked every four hours to avoid any hypothermia or hyperthermia. The therapy can also be distracted to bring about what bonding. So you stop the therapy for some time and then you attach the baby to the breast and then you establish the bonding in the baby. And this can minimize what? By removing the baby from the lights and then for 15 minutes, every what? Eight hours. And then you cuddle the baby. The mother should sink for the baby. The mother should look right in the eye of the baby in order to determine if the baby is having any inflammation or infection or edema on the eye. The parents should also be encouraged and then be taught and then speak to the child during feeding. You need to encourage them when they bring the baby out of the incubator. And then there should be also accurate timing of the therapy. The time we started the therapy and then when to stop. And then also the observations that you need to carry on the baby. You need to observe the skin of the baby. You need to assess the baby for dehydration. You know the level of dehydration. When we come to the IMCI, we'll be talking about how to assess a child with dehydration. You need to observe the skin and the tone, the muzzle tone. You need to pinch the abdomen and see the time that it will return back to its normal position. And then also you need to observe the fontanel. Is there any dehydration by sunking of the fontanel? drying of the mucosa lining, you need to observe all these things in the baby to assess what? Dehydration. And then you also have to observe the what? The electrical gadgets because you are using light. The time of what? Power interaction and then the rest. You need to ensure safety. Make sure that all the electrical gadgets, gadgets that you are using are in safety condition. And then also, if the baby does not respond to the phototherapy and then still the breathing level is still high, we need to do exchange transfusion. So you need to observe the baby and then you also continue to do the serum breathing test in order to assess 
the level of belittling. Let's look at the family support. What support do you have to give to the family during the phototherapy? As I said early on, some of them, they run away and leave their babies. So if you don't want them to run away and leave the baby for you on the ward, you need to what? Support them. So you need to explain to them every procedure that is being carried out, especially when you are covering the eye of the baby and then you are exposing the baby. Because you are removing the baby, the mother may ask you, my baby will be feeling cold. You need to put on the dress for the baby. Explain to the mother why you are exposing the baby. And then why you are covering the eye. So that the light rays will not enter the eye to bring about any blindness. You are, not, you are exposing the baby so that the light will get to all parts of the body. You need to be turning the baby so that every part of the baby will be exposed in order to what? Excrete the blue bay, so that the baby color will change from yellow to pink. Then also, efforts should be made by the parents towards the covering of the child. When they do that, you need to praise them because it's not every parent that will be able to take care of this sick baby. Some of them are so weak that the parent cannot even hold them. I know a mother who came like that, and then even getting closer to the baby, the mother cannot do that. So we say that encourage them. So we need to encourage these mothers when caring for these babies. We need to support them in all aspects of the nursing care so that they will also be part of the caring of the baby. Most of the time, they feel guilty. They think that is their fault. They didn't do something right. That's why the baby is sick. That is why the baby is looking yellowish. But we need to educate them. We need to teach them the causes. That is not their fault. It's, it's a physiology. It's a normal change that the baby has to go through. Just that is becoming excess in the baby. So we are doing our efforts in order to what? Let the baby look normal. So we need to explain everything to the mother. So if the skin color also changes, okay, we need to tell the parents that it will disappear within some few months. Let's look at the complications. What are the complications that they go through when they go under this phototherapy? We can have retinal damage. If the, the opaque object that we are using to cover the eye is not well done, the eye, the retina can be damaged. They will also have skin rashes. You know, we are producing it. And most babies don't like it. So there's it rashes. There's passage of loose green stools. Passage of loose green stools. When we are getting rid of the blue when it's excess, and then the blue wing has been passed excessively, we have these green stools being passed out. And then bronzy baby syndrome. Bronzy baby syndrome is also the way you see the baby urine becoming very black. It means that we are excreting more than necessary of the blue bean. This condition occurs mostly with what? Those who have what? Elevated, conjugated blue bean. So we, are, we, we, we want to say that instead of the blue bean, now it has been conjugated, it's, we are having elevated of the what? Conjugated blue bean in the system. Now let's look at the pathological jaundice. Pathological jaundice. We finished with physiological jaundice. We are saying that for physiological jaundice, it's 90% in all newborns. And then we see the signs and symptoms. It said that it occurs what? 72 hours after birth. 
So when we finish with pathological jaundice, we'll be looking at the difference between physiological jaundice and then pathological jaundice. With pathological jaundice, this jaundice is seen in the first 24 hours of life. And the level of blue beam exceeds what? 250 millimoles and persists and present at bed. But with the physiological, it's 72 hours after bed. Let's look at the causes of pathological jaundice. This is due to what? Excessive or abnormally rapid rates of what? Red blood cells distraction. It can also be due to infection in the mother. It can also be due to what? Albumin binding capacity, excessive breakdown of red blood cells, reabsorption of blue beam from the gut due to slow peristalsis. Now, the types of pathological jaundice. We have the resource incompatibility, the ABO incompatibility, effective jaundice breastfeeding jaundice, and then we also have obstructive jaundice. Let's start with the resource incompatibility jaundice. Hemolytic disease of the newborn occurs when there is what? Resource incompatibility between the mother and then the fetus. This incompatibility occurs when the mother is resource Positive, negative and the fetus is resource positive, having inherited it from the father. Although there is no meeting of the fetal and the maternal blood, sometimes the fetal blood enters through the cycle with antigen falling into the mother as they pass through the circulation. So the fetus is there. The mother is there. The mother is resource negative. The fetus is resource positive from the father. So when there is missing of blood in utero, then the mother tries to form some antigens, which becomes a foreign body to the child, and they start fighting each other. So these antigens that try to, the mother tries to build foreign bodies for himself because we are seeing the baby as a foreign body, they try to fight. And then in the process of fighting, there is breakdown of what? Red blood cells. And this results in the jaundice, the one of birth. When this occurs, the mother has some what? Natural defense mechanism to respond for the resource negative antibodies. This is what we term as what? ISO immunization that affects only the second pregnancy. So when these antibodies comes in, so the first one normally escape these antibodies. So they are being born normal. So now the mother has realized that mm, I have some foreign bodies entering into my blood. So now I have to build antibodies to fight this foreign body. So when the second pregnancy comes, the mother sees this second pregnancy as a foreign body. And then the antibodies that the mother has bought during the first pregnancy start fighting the second baby. During this period, about 0.5 to 5 moles of what? fetal blood enters what? the maternal blood. The resource negative antigens on the fetal red blood cells then stimulate the production of the material resource negative antibodies, which are then fighting the baby. When there is reabsorption of what? Amino synthesis. So when there is fluid exchange in utero, that also brings about these antibodies coming into play to fight the baby. When there's also kefir, external kefir version, 
when we try to tend the baby, especially when we are having breech delivery, and then we try to turn the baby in utero, and then there is a form of what? Mixture of blood in the uterus or in utero. Then this mixture occurs and then the antibodies comes into play and they fight the baby. Then antipartum hemorrhage, when the mother tries to bleed before the 20th week, there's mixture between the mother and then the fetus. This also brings about the antibodies coming to fight. And then the subsequent pregnancies, when the mother continues to get pregnant, and then the antibodies. And that is the reason why most pregnancy, you see some couples, first child is normal, they give birth correct. But the second, third child, all the time you have either stillbirth or spontaneous abortion. The abortion keep on coming. And then we blame the witches and the wizards. But it's as a result of what? This resource incompatibility. Most of the time, especially in our rural areas, they don't do these examinations. When they ask them to do it, they don't do it. Some of them even don't attend antenatal clinic. And so these examinations are not being carried out for us to identify if the mother is resource negative or resource positive. And then they combine with a, a father who is resource positive. And then these are the end results. So the subsequent pregnancy keep on aborting and aborting as a result of what? Resource incompatibility. And then also when the mother is being transfused with resource positive blood. And then minor fetal maternal hemoglobin problems brings about this resource incompatibility. So we also have some form of what? Congenital diseases in these babies. Congenital anemia can set in. This is when we have what? Hemolysis, when the hemolysis of the baby is minimal. And then, although it takes gradual course, during the first week of life, it is normal. And then the third and then the tenth day, everything stabilized. The blood level can now have low as what? 5.9. The spleen and then the liver also enlarges. And then the child should be what? Transfused with 30 ml of what? Pack source blood. Now let's look at severe jaundice of the newborn. This is very common, severe in the, in the newborn. There is severe hemolysis in utero. The jaundice is seen within 20 to 24 hours after delivery. There is staining of the umbilical cord. So these babies normally they come with what? Jaundice all over the body. Everything is right in utero because of the mixture of blood. The HB is very low. The child becomes asphyxiated and they have this fluffy mucus coming from the mouth. There's also what? Hepatomegaly because of the changes. The liver tries to fight itself because the liver is immature. The bilirubin too is high. The, the liver has to conjugate this bilirubin. But because of that, because of this activity, the liver tends to what? Enlarge. This can lead to what? Caniteros. Because as the baby is in utero, we said that this blue beam has affinity for what? Fatty and the nervous tissue. And they are able to cross the blood-brain barrier and then go into the brain tissue to cause this caniteros. So right in utero, the, the blue beam is able to cross the blood-brain barrier and then goes into the brain to cause caniteros. So by the time the baby is being born, the baby is already having the condition. What are the investigations that are being carried out? So we need to take the HV. We also have to do comb tests where we take it from the mother and then we do the test. We also do the ABO grouping test. We also do the resource factor to determine if it's as a result of the resource incompatibility. We also do enzymes, serum enzymes tests. And then, if possible, we do grouping and cross-matching, and then we do exchange 
transfusion. Management. How do we manage these babies? At birth, the cord should be clamped fast to prevent entry of blood to the child from the maternal blood. And I believe you've done some bits of ops. So you should know how to cut the cord. You know there is the cord that blood vessels pass through, get to the placenta, and then from the mother to the baby. So the moment the baby comes up, and you see that the baby is severely jaundiced, quickly you need to what? Clamp the cord, and then you cut to prevent further transmission of blood from the mother to the fetus. Then after cutting the cord, you need to apply some little powder to it. Then about 14 ml of what blood is taken for the following investigation. So you need to do this test and then to rule out all these form of conditions in the baby. We are going to look at another aspect of the jaundice, hydros fetalis. This is the worst form of what, the severe form of the disease. That is the pathological jaundice. This is very gross hemolysis causing fetal hyposia. Because of the distraction of the red blood cells, continuous distraction of the red blood cells right from utero, the baby is not having enough oxygen. Remember, is the red blood cells that carry oxygen for the baby in utero. So now that the fetus is not having these red blood cells, it's difficult for them to get oxygen. Therefore, it results in what? Hyposia. There's cardiac failure and then generalized edema. So right from utero, the baby is coming with this condition. What are the signs that you see that the baby is having this hydros fetalis? There's hyposia cardiac failure, generalized edema. The placenta may be pale, very, very large and bulky because they are all forcing to, to build themselves to survive, forcing to survive, and then forcing to produce more blood for the baby. But the baby also keep on destroying the red blood cells. So the placenta also become large, the liver become large, everything of the baby become large, and even the heart for the baby to use to breathe it's not there. And then there will be more fluid in the baby.